Hi everyone. In this video, I want to take you through step by step all the the whole process of setting up a cafe press shop and creating products by uploading an image and then editing the image in the product. It's uh, pretty convoluted with Cafe Press. I had a lot of trouble at first on this site. The interface is uh, very uh, different from anything I've ever used, but once I got this down, I found that you can use this to create about 300 products per hour and set up a really big shop if you want to. So this may not be the best way to do it, but uh, this is the best way I've figured out how to do it. There's some weird twists in here, so bear with me. I'm starting out right here, logged in. This is the screen. I'm logged into Cafe Press. I've gone to uh, the shop section, and I, I, here's my shop that I already have for uh, my Fifth Avenue Gallery shop, but I'm not going to use that right now. I'm going to open a new shop just to demo the whole process. So the first thing you get is a, a few spots to uh, fill in info. So let's just give it a name. And as soon as I enter that, it fills out the URL for the shop. And then there's a couple of questions to answer. So do I have artwork ready? Yes, I have. Now, the next is I choose the type of shop and it claims that it's going to provide tools based on this. So I'll pick business just in case they have any tools that might actually help us sell something. Though I haven't seen anything like that yet. And same here, opening the online shop. I'm, the reason I'm doing it is to sell my artwork on merchandise. And I'll save that. Now, the next thing you do is choose a theme. Uh, truly, all of these are pretty generic until you customize them, which uh, I'd be happy to show in a different video if anyone wants to. For now, I'm going to pick the simplest theme, which is what I use for Fifth Avenue Gallery. And it brings us to choose a product set. Now, this is where I have some problems with uh, the way Cafe Press does it. You have your choice of several sets. So apparel favorites here. It contains 34 items selected from the 330 that Cafe Press carries whatever they thought are apparel favorites or business logo wear gifts, whatever it is. But I find all of these to be pretty random. And anyway, what I want is basically everything where my image fits and looks good. So I chose to go with build your own set and I recommend you do this too. What you do is click here, build your own. And you get this little pop-up, which actually allows you to choose everything but uh, department by department. So the first department here is men's shirts. There's 24. I'm just going to click select all and all 24 of those immediately appear here. Then I click women's shirts, select all, and you see they're added. Here's the men's shirt still down here, the women's. I'll click to the third one, select all. And I'm going to go through this whole list, clicking each department and select all until this uh, space here has all 330 products. And then I'll just give it a name, uh, everything. Now I've done this before, so I'm not gonna go through it and waste your time watching me, but in your Cafe's Press uh, account, you, you'll wanna go through all this and create an everything set. Uh, I'm gonna click cancel and don't save. You'll click uh, save product set. Okay, but uh, and when you do that, you'll see your everything set here, but don't click it. If you click it here, it'll just throw those products into the shop. But what what I want to do is create a section for that specific design and put the products inside of that. That way the shop is going to be nice and organized. So I'm just going to the shop is actually created here, even though it hasn't told us that I'm going to click back to your shops. And now I see it here, my cool Dharma shop. So what, uh, well, <clears throat> you'll want to customize all the settings, but I, I'm not going to show that in this video. I want to show how the product creation. So I'm going to click on sections and products here. And we see the store is currently empty. This is the storefront. So what we see on this page 
is going to eventually be a list of sections, which is actually the same as designs. So uh, what I want to do is add a section. I'm going to add the first section to the shop. And now I have an option to add one design to many products. This is exactly what I want to do. Click. Now, let's, uh, for this one, I'm going to use uh, one of my favorite ashram images, the, the Chenrig Temple. That's the name of the image, so that'll be the name of the section. And then I, for the image, I'll select a new image. And this is going to bring me to the page where all my images are uploaded. Now, if you, if you have a new account, you'll see nothing here. And you'll click on Upload New Image and just upload it from your drive. You'll be asked to enter certain information. Well, you know what? I better show that because that's actually a little tricky. So let, let's upload a brand new one. In fact, I'll delete this one. Well, wait a second. Yeah, I can delete that. That doesn't have any products attached to it. And let's upload a, a brand new one. So uh, I'm going to click on Upload New Image. Now first, there we go. I didn't click anything. It somehow loads designs and it eventually goes to the file browser. Now you can drag and drop your image. I'm going to click here on open file browser and I'll just navigate to it. That's, uh, oh, I'm already right there. So, uh, yeah, so actually this is my, I don't know if you can see this or not in the video. So I'll just click on the image. It uploads. Now you might not see pop-ups in here. So the image in a moment will come up. There it is. And I need to enter info for it, the name, the tags, the description. Now, it's a, it's a little weird. I click here and it pops up here, or I can just click up here and enter the name. But either way, I entered the data on the top. So I enter in here the name, Chenrig Temple, enter a description, and this, you can change all this later. So for now, I'll just put in uh, a great... I'll just put in a, a few things. And for tags, what you want to do here with tags is put in the words that you expect your customers might use to search for your products. So you can put in things like uh, the type of art. So screenshot art, second life. You can put in things about the team, Chen Rig, Chen Rezig. Uh, um, You can put in uh, words that might have to do with the theme of it, healing, blessing, things like that. Whatever you think your customers might search for. You can edit all this later, but uh, you can just get a start on this. And once you've clicked all those, you'll see here it's populated. And you can't really read it, but you can see that it has data. When it's at that stage, click here, save on one design. And now you come back to your page where you can now select the design that you just uploaded. And it takes us back to the section page. Now this is here and it knows this is what it's going to be putting onto all the products. And finally, we set the price markup. So here we have several choices. Uh, EJ has been talking about 100% Keystone, which I could easily set up here. Uh, only thing with that, I feel like that pricing will set cer certain, I feel like that doesn't really work that well on Cafe Press. You could do an exact markup, like 10 for each, but that also doesn't really work that well. I really like this tiered markup. You can click the question mark and see exactly uh, how they've done it, but I like the premium, which just adds a few bucks to the price of each one, and it's kind of set up proportionally. You know you're kind of in the range that works on Cafe Press. So I choose, I choose premium. You can change all this later though. And finally, to add products, here we're going to use the everything product set we just created. So when I collect here, select, here's everything 
that you just created and go. Now we get to watch Cafe Press create these. Uh, what you do not want to do is click away from the screen before it's ready. What uh, I kind of feel like this needs to be almost watched. So I like to kind of just scroll down the screen because just to check all the images are there. And pretty soon, if I go fast enough, see here, it's not ready yet. I can watch it create. This is why if I exit this, this screen now, the products won't be ready. So I just kind of wait for them to populate. Now they, I can see they, they all look wrong. I'm going to need to go into every single one of these and edit the image placement, which is the next step. It looks like you can do that on this screen because there's an edit button, but it doesn't work for that, which I'll show you in a minute once these are created. There we go. Almost at the end now. All right, there we go. It's created all of them. Now, uh, I'll go back to the top, but I'll just show you. This actually confused me for a long time, but if you click edit here, you'd think you can, adjust, you can edit the way the image is shown. You can't really. You can change the image here. You can change its size. You can put it on the pocket. What you can't do is change the way it's aligned. So uh, I'm not going to use this screen. In fact, once it gets to this point, you can now click away. And uh, this is real tricky, but what you want to do is go to My Designs. We're going to go back to the design because those products, the way Cafe Press organizes it, they're attached to the design. I see here 332 products on my Chenrig Temple. So I click on that and now I can edit everything about this design, including the products themselves. This is a super useful screen here. So the first thing, let's look at the top here. You can edit your name, your tags, your description. Now these are very important. This is what is shown on your store and what Cafe Press uses. So get those just the way you want it. When that's right, move down to this section and here we can edit all the products a different way. Now it's kind of overwhelming to have 330. You can do it this way though. You can do section by section or you can just do all products. Uh, I think I'll just do all for this time. Uh, so I just go to the first row and on these, I can easily see there's white space on the top and bottom. The image is not aligned, but sometimes you can hardly see if it's there or not. I think the best thing to do is actually to click into every single image, all 330, and uh, check it because that's the only way you can see it. I click in, click right on the edit button here, and now I can adjust the image placement. And actually, the the for almost all of these, the adjustment is super simple. All I'm going to do is click to fill mode. See, fit mode here, and it fits the image into the print zone. But that leaves half of the space white. With fill, it's going to fill the print zone with as much of the image as it can. You can also move this around, like uh, if you want. You can move it a little bit, nudge it. Usually you don't need to. Click save and then close that and immediately updates. And then just move on to the next one. Sometimes it takes a minute to upload. Sometimes it actually gets stuck. Let's see, let's just try that again. Huh. Okay, well it's stuck, which actually is good because it, it does get stuck. This interface is doing a lot of work. So I'll just reload the page. If it gets stuck, no problem. It, nothing's lost. Reload the page, and now let's try it. And that's odd. 
Let's try the next. Oh, well, the next one works. So I'll save it. I'll just have to come back to that one later. Save, close. There it goes. Edit, load, fill, save, close. Edit. Huh. You know, maybe my internet connection is uh, a little flaky. I'm not going to worry about it for now. Uh, I've never had a problem with that before. I'll just show you one more thing. If the image doesn't fit on some of these, like let's just say it didn't fit well on this, it just doesn't look good, you just click X here and it's gone. Uh, so what I do is go through all of these. This takes, I don't know, less than an hour. You can do all 330 of them. And when you're done, we're again gonna jump. We're gonna go back up to the menu here and we're gonna jump back to shops because uh, I've edited the products on this screen, but now I want to go back to my shop to adjust how the products are presented in the shop. So again, I click on Sections Products. Now it's not empty. I've got one section in the storefront, Chenrig Temple, and I can edit that section. Now it takes me back to this edit screen, which... Uh, you can rearrange your products here. You can divide them into subsections if you want. But uh, what uh, is very important, what's a, kind of, what, what you must look into is the section info here. So click the section info. And uh, this is the same screen we saw before. We can adjust the markup, the, but we have here spaces for, uh, for text to describe it. So this one is the short version, which is what will appear on the home page of your shop. So let's just put a short description. And then I'll just copy that into here. Now the difference on this one is you can use HTML. So just as an example, I can put these uh, paragraph tags here. I could put, uh, you know, an, an H2. And I could put, uh, yeah, I could put reasons, whatever. You can use your, I, I won't show any more than that, but you can put all the HTML, you can put images in there. Uh, I think they have to be hosted somewhere else. But uh, when you've got that the way you want it, click Save. And this shop is, uh, is created. I'm just going to, I'm actually going to just type in the address of it here. So, I put in cafepress.com, my cool Dharma shop, and uh, here it is. That's the shop we just created. When I click in here, we'll see... Uh, We'll see all that stuff. Of course, I didn't actually adjust the images. I like to set, the, I like to do the t-shirts so that they're square with, the, I use the fill mode on almost everything to use the maximum print space on each item. Uh, generally, that seems to be uh, more proportional and look better, but you can do it any way you want. Uh, all the products are here. Yeah, it takes a while to populate the page. Actually, the thumbnails generate over the next couple of hours, I've noticed. But that's it, and uh, well, I'll just show you one more thing. This is the, uh, I use that simplest template, so that gives you this look, but you can customize the whole shop with HTML. Um, this is the shop I made for Fifth Avenue Gallery, so I just, uh, you know, I tried to mimic to some extent the colors and the style from the site and put in an image there. So you can, you can customize it a lot more than this if you're decent with code. So, you know, once you've got a shop set up that you like, then uh, it's definitely worth to do that just to get rid of that generic look and, you know, make it look a little more inviting as a place to shop. I really hope that is helpful to a few people out there. If there's any more questions, then uh, please put it in the comments and uh, I or someone else will help. Uh, happy product creation.